Malware is the biggest scourge of the Windows world. Those of us who run our machines on Windows have to be constantly vigilant to avoid having our machines be compromised by this menace. And no matter how vigilant and how careful you are, you can still be compromised. And some of the most recent forms of malware are almost impossible to eradicate once you've acquired them. They use a, a variety of techniques um, to basically um, to become undeletable and to rebuild themselves if you do manage to delete part of them. Uh, the first technique is to split the program up into multiple parts. Each of these parts keeps an eye out for the other parts and if it sees that you've managed to kill one of the other parts it rebuilds it. Second, this malware loads itself uh, at all times. It loads itself in safe mode. Uh, Windows file locking then prevents any open file from being deleted. Uh, this file, lo file locking is so strict that there's just no way around it. Effectively, this means that no program that you run in Windows can delete this malware. You can't delete it. No antivirus can delete it. Nothing can kill it. Um, so combined with uh, the multiple parts and then the watching itself to rebuild it if you do manage to figure out some way to do something about it. Um, effectively antivirus or anti-malware solutions that run on your machine are incapable of dealing with this class of malware. This video exists to provide technical professionals and uh, the serious geeks who are, are not uh, afraid to reinstall their machines and to go in there and dig around in the system directory and risk breaking their machines. If you follow my technique and you make a mistake, you can quite easily force a reinstall of your system. I take no responsibility for anyone who is incapable of applying this technique, who does not have the skills, who chooses to attempt it anyway. I apologize if you try this and you mess up. All right, now on to the actual preparations you're going to need to do this. You're going to need two pieces of software. You're going to need uh, auto runs from Microsoft Sys Internals, available uh, on their website, link over here. And you're going to need System Rescue CD, a live CD Linux distribution with the key feature of built-in NTFS full read-write support. Um, also, a link. Uh, you'll need to go and get those and download them. And uh, once you get those, you'll be on to the next step. All right. Next you need to deal with auto runs. After you've extracted the archive you downloaded, the first thing you're going to want to do is rename the auto runs file something else. Um, it doesn't really matter what you rename it to, but the reason is is that a bunch of this malware has started to uh, take steps to stop this technique from working. Um, they've realized that this is one of the few ways you can actually fix their uh, trash that they've foisted upon you. So uh, they're going to do whatever they can to stop it. Uh, in this case, they're uh, checking to see if you load the autoruns.exe image into memory. And if they see it, they stop the, the process. So it loads and then it exits. So you don't even, I mean, you, you don't even get a window to pop up before it exits. Um, Anyway, uh, the current solution is just rename the file and it works fine. Um, although I suspect at some point they'll refine their techniques for detecting it and you'll have to go to further lengths to make auto runs work. Um, all right, once you have auto runs up and running, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go over here to options 
and select Verify Code Signatures and Hide Signed Microsoft Entries. Then you're going to want to go over here to File and refresh your list. Um, this is going to allow you to dramatically reduce the number of files that you have to go through by hiding things that uh, Auto Runs is able to verify as belonging to Microsoft. Um, then you're going to want to go through the list here and check every single file uh, with Google or whatever other method you can come up with to decide whether it's a legitimate file or whether it's a malware. If it's malware, you need to write down the file name and the location very carefully from the image path here. Uh, you need the whole, the whole thing. You need to know where it is as well as what it is. So, now you have your list of malware that you intend to delete. The next step is to boot into your uh, Linux live CD environment and delete them. Alright, now we're all booted up and you can see here that uh, um, once you're all booted up, and I just let the default boot run, uh, for most machines you shouldn't need to uh, change anything about Rescue CD's boot. Um, you get to the command prompt here, and the first thing you need to do is mount your Windows volume. Uh, that's described here under NTFS 3G. You can see right here a command you'd type. Um, this would be the uh, mounting the first uh, serial ATA drive, first partition of the first serial ATA drive. Um, if you don't if you have a different hard drive set up, you're going to need a different device here. Uh, the first partition of the uh, parallel ATA drive, first parallel ATA drive, would be HDA1. Uh, if it's the second drive, it's B instead of A. If it's the number is the partition number. So HDB2 would be the second partition of the second parallel ATA drive. Um, if you need uh, more info on that, uh, you'll have to look elsewhere. Uh, after you've got your partition mounted, you'll need to uh, change to the directory using CD, uh, something to the effect of uh, CD mount slash MNT slash Windows slash uh, Windows slash uh, System32. That's where most of your malware is going to be hiding out in, is your S Windows System 32 directory. And uh, you should be able to use uh, ls to look at the files to make sure you're on the right disk. And uh, um, once you've uh, got it mounted, the next step is to delete the malware from your list. Uh, your list should uh, have a complete description of which files and where they are. Um, this is the most advanced step. Uh, if you can't handle this step, this video is not for you. Once you've finished deleting it, the next step is to reboot back into Windows. All right, if everything went well for you, you're pretty much all done. All that's left for you to do is a little bit of quick cleanup. You need to uh, run auto runs and remove the uh, auto start entries for the files you just deleted. That will stop Windows from complaining for the, the, about them not existing when it boots. And you should run a full system scan with your favorite antivirus software to uh, clean up any of the uh, remaining files. Um, I hope this saved you from a reinstall. I, I hope that you uh, didn't mess anything up in the process. Have a good day.